Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. He who owns Palestine, Israel, rules the world. This episode tells the true story of the land labeled the crossroad of the world. Palestine, Israel. A region where emerging world empires must own if they want to successfully manage global trade and commerce. A land without a people and a people without a land. A land without a people for a people without a land. A land without a people is a strange way to describe the region that has been fought over for thousands of years by the greatest empires of the world known as the Holy Land by 2.38 billion Christians 1.8 billion Muslims and 14 million Jewish people and a world populated by 8 billion people almost half the world's population believes they have a special interest in the land of Palestine, Israel. So we can see it is in the great interest of certain groups to look on this land as empty of people or the actual owners cannot be easily identified. Race science or genetic data has been used to track down the original inhabitants but the methods used are not universally accepted. So, without proof of who really owns the land, the conflict continues. A people without a country, even as their own land, as subsequently to be shown, is in a great measure a country without a people. This quote is by Reverend Alexander Keith in the year 1843. In its most common wording, a land without a people and a people without a land. The phrase appeared in print in an 1844 review of Keith's book in the Scottish Free Church magazine. The name of his book was The Land of Israel, according to the covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and Jacob. Palestine, under the British mandate, the British occupied Palestine, Israel, from 1923 to 1948 when they were expelled or kicked out of the land. Palestine, crossroads of the world. Palestine, ancient and new, across the face of the earth, 
Few places have felt the touch of foreign boots as Palestine. As a geographical entity, Palestine sits at the center of Eurasian conflict. From the time of the pharaohs and to the Great War of the 20th century, World War I. History is rife with examples of people, armies, and borders moving across Palestine. These movements have created the unique cultures that exist in the Levant to this day. Even as the people of the region are cyclically replenished. For example, the original people of the land of Palestine, Israel, were the people of Canaan. The people of Canaan were expelled by the Philistines, the Israelites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, and the Ishmaelites. Then those people were expelled by the Assyrians. And the Assyrians colonized the land of Israel, Palestine. After that, the Babylonians came into the land and expelled the Assyrians. And then the Persians came and expelled the Babylonians. The Greeks came and expelled the Persians. The Persians were expelled by Alexander the Great. The Greeks and Macedonians. The Greeks and Macedonians were expelled by the Romans. And so on. It's a never-ending cycle. From the earliest Jewish settlements to the time of the Roman Empire, Palestine was a hotbed of activity. Jews, Egyptians, Hittites, Persians, and Greeks all tread on the soil of Palestine. From Rome until the rise of the Ottoman Empire, the riches of the Levant filled the coffers of foreign powers, each of whom left their unique mark on the region. Each of whom left their unique mark on the region means they left babies, they left their children. So the population of Palestine, Israel, has been a mixed population since the Jews were expelled and before the edge of empires Palestine may have been the crossroads of the ancient world but it was really the center of attention empires rose and fell around the Mediterranean world but the Levant was for a long time a piece in the games of other players. Egypt was the first great power to truly exercise control over Palestine, but largely as a buffer against the Hittites and threats from Asia. Alexander the Great spent a good deal of time pacifying the region as a means of creating supply lines to his wars in Egypt and Persia. If you desire to control the commerce and trade of the world, you must control this region. All ancient world empires knew this. Here is a map of the Egyptian empire and the Hittite empire fighting over the region of Palestine, Israel. The Assyrian Empire lasted from 824 to 625 BC, took over the land of Palestine, Israel, the crossroads of the world, deported the northern tribes of Israel, and sent Assyrian colonies to colonize the land of Israel. 
you can take and grab hold of something. But the Syrians, like every other nation, were not able to keep the land of Israel in their possession. In the 6th century BC, the Babylonian Empire captured the region of Palestine, Israel, took this region, this area, out of the possession of the Assyrians, captured the city of Jerusalem, destroyed the temple of Jerusalem, exiled the southern kingdom of Judah, the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the Babylonians placed colonies inside the land of Palestine, Israel. But they were not able to hold the land for long. Next in line was the Persians and the Persian Empire. They, the Persians, took the region, Israel, Palestine, from the Babylonians, sent the Jews or the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi back into the land of Palestine, Israel. And the Persians sent colonies of Persians to live in the land of Palestine, Israel. Eventually, they lost the land also. Then came the Greeks, who took the region of Palestine, Israel, from the Persians, and they became the new owners of the crossroads of the world to gain the trade routes over commerce and trade. The Romans also sought world domination. So under the Roman Empire, Syria, Palestine, Israel was and became a province of the Roman Empire. And the Romans, when they colonized Palestine, Israel, they discovered colonies of Greeks and Babylonians living alongside their conquered enemies, the Jews. In this map of the Byzantine Empire, it is well illustrated how the land Palestine, Israel, became a prized possession in the hands of the Byzantine emperors. Arab Muslim conquest. Under their prophet Muhammad, the Arabians expanded outside Arabia and to the lands of the Mediterranean, the lands formerly owned by the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, or the East Roman Empire. Palestine, Israel, was part of their conquest to control commerce and trade. And during the Crusades, the Christian kings and knight warriors of Spain, France, of Germany, of England, of Italy, battled against the Muslim Arabs for the land of Palestine, Israel.
the European Crusaders also left colonies of children in the land. But ultimately, they could not permanently hold the land. So later, we see a map of the Ottoman Empire who controlled the land of Palestine, Israel. The empire where the sun never sets. The Imperial British Empire of Great Britain encountered the Ottoman Empire or the Turks in Palestine, Israel. And as usual, the Ottoman Turks could not hold Palestine, Israel in their possessions. And it became a possession of Great Britain. When the British ruled or came into the area of Palestine, Israel, the Ottoman Turks were the ruling group. And the Arabs, or the mixed group population that lived in Palestine, Israel, under the name Arabs, were the minority group. Not by population, they were not the ruling class, the Turks was. The British helped the Arabs conquer their land from the Turks and made promises and concessions that they didn't keep. So the question is, so who really owns the land? Palestine, Israel. In this segment entitled, Race is a Social Construct in the Middle East. The false notion or concept that the Middle Eastern look or physical type is what determines who the land of Palestine, Israel belongs to is a false concept. It's a complete fabrication. It's a social construct. 3,000 years ago, the nations that lived in Palestine, Israel, did have certain distinctive physical looks. But they lived in a small area or region. And they intermarried. So you cannot always tell by physical looks what ethnic nation someone belonged to. You had to ask them, who were your fathers? Who were your forefathers? Because ethnic heritage was determined by your paternal family line. This image before us is a great example of race as a social construct. This image is a family of illustrious American actors and entertainers. And the center is one of the greatest actors of our time, James Earl Jones, the voice of Darth Vader, of the Star Wars franchise. To the left is his father, Robert Earl Jones. To the right is his son, Glenn Earl Jones. In the ancient Middle East, race was determined by your paternal father, family, line. So race is a social construct. 
in the Middle East. There's no such thing as race by physical type. Only race by family type. Raza. Family. Because in the Middle East, race means family. Not color or physical type. Race or ethnic identity or nationality means your family line. Trace through your father. Social construction of race. Examples. Definition. Criticism. Social construction of race. The social construction of race is a sociological concept that holds that the category of race is defined in language and culture rather than objective or a biological fact. Definition. Race is a recent human invention, a social construct designed to divide members of a society into a hierarchy of social, economic, and political advantage or disadvantage based on a set of randomly selected normal human variations in phenotype. And that's why it's impossible today to determine who owns the land because the people of Palestine, Israel are classified as Arabs in language and culture, but they are a mixture of all the different ethnic groups that conquered and colonized the land Palestine, Israel. They are the children of Turks, Arabs, Greeks, Romans, Persians, Assyrians, Babylonians, Jews, and all the other different groups that once lived in the land. They are the ones who were not expelled and they intermarried. So now they share the same phenotype or similar phenotype or similar physical type, which is classified as Arab or Middle Eastern. Example, Italians as whites has demonstrated how Italians were not seen as white people in early colonial Australia. As a result, they faced increased discrimination. Over time, as Italian Australians assimilated and influx of darker skinned migrants arrived, Italians slowly became included in the category of whiteness in Australian discourse. So the idea of who's white and who's non-white is not chiseled in stone. It's something that can be changed over time. So what are the real definitions that can determine your or mine ethnic heritage? And if this puzzle or riddle of who actually owned the land of Palestine, Israel is not solved by human endeavor, it seems like this will lead the world into World War Three. This is about information that usually people will not consider it necessary unless for purposes of school or your career or your job or something like that. But we're living in different times now. So this is an issue that affects the world. So this information is necessary. There's this general consensus of the general makeup 
of the people that lived in the Middle East. And that it was, or it is, or it has always been this way. So first, let's kind of take a look at who live in the Middle East? What type of people live in the Middle East? And what is the general ethnic makeup of the people? There's a general idea, but there's an overall misconception of who they really are. The Middle East peoples, over 350 million people live in the Middle East. Countries like Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, and Israel. Ethnicity. Arabs constitute the majority ethnic group in all of the Middle East states, except Iran. The people of Iran could be considered Persians. In Israel, the people in Israel could be considered Jewish. In Turkey, the people of Turkey could be considered Turks ethnically. They are not Arabs. Originally, the term Arab, which it comes from a Hebrew word that means mixed, referred to the peoples that inhabited the northern and central portions of the Arabian Peninsula. Following the spread of various Arab Islamic empires throughout the Middle East and into Europe, so Arabs actually conquered parts of Eastern Europe, Southern Europe in the past, and South Asia. The term Arab has come to be synonymous with those who speak Arabic. Presently, about 60% of the total population in the Middle East are classified as Arab. Arab people or Arabic speaking people did not always constitute the majority of the population in the Middle East. Over the last 2,000 years, there's been a dramatic population change in that region. If we take a look at this map of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, around the time of 625 to 539 BC, we can see who existed in the Middle East at that time and how the Arabs, who was just one of many groups, now are considered the dominant population group in this region. I demonstrated by circling two regions. On the right, there's the group Arabu or Arabs and the term Qadar. And Qadar is one of the tribes of Arabs or the sons of Ishmael. So these are Arabs. The Arabs actually live in a wider region, but this is predominantly where the Arabs lived 2,000 years ago. On the left, there's another circle. And in that circle, there's Judah, Edom, Moab. And slightly out of the circle is Philista or the Philistines, Phoenicia. If you look, to the bottom of that circle, we have the country of Egypt. If we look above that circle, Syria. And then above that, Aram. And then you go a little above that, Hittites. And to the right, Assyria. You go down you, to the right, more to the edge, it's the Medes. Go down, Elam. These are all the different people groups that lived in the Middle East. But in modern day times, the Arabs, Kedar, the sons of Ishmael, are the dominated 
population group in that region. And what I mean by dominating is ethnically, linguistically, phenotypically, they are the dominating group in that region. All these other groups were expelled or absorbed into the group we know today called Arabs. Absorbed by intermarrying, being conquered, being colonized by the Arabs. The other groups, their majority populations were expelled. The Jews were not the only group or the Israelites were not the only group expelled from that region. All these other groups were expelled from this region. And before the Israelites lived in the land of Canaan, before the Philistines lived in the land of Canaan, all the Arabs, the original Aboriginal natives, inhabitants of that land were called Canaanites, as this map shows, with names like Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Amorites, Gergesites, Hivites. These are the original Aboriginal people of the land of Canaan, the people of Canaan. They were called Canaanites. And if we refer back to the Neo-Babylonian Empire map, Canaanites are nowhere to be found. But the remnants of the Canaanites are the Phoenicians, but the majority of the Canaanites were expelled by the Israelites, the Philistines, the Moabites, the Edomites, and the Arabs, and the people of Aram and the Syrians. So, there was a demographic change 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. This is not nothing new to this region. The land of Canaan was divided up among these nations. In other words, the people of Canaan were expelled and their land was divided up among these nations who expelled the Canaanites. Number one, Israel. Number two, Ishmael, also known as the Arabs. Number three, Edom. Number four, Moab. Number five, Hemet. Number six is Midian. These were also Hebrew speaking people. Median was a son of Abraham, etc. So Israel, Ishmael, Edom, Moab, Ammon, Median, these were Hebrew speaking people. Now, number seven was Syrians. They also expelled the Canaanites from their land. Number eight, Phoenicians occupied this land. They were the remnant of surviving Canaanites. The only ones not to be expelled after the Israelites and the other Hebrew speaking people came into the land. Number nine, the Philistines, who were Egyptian in origin. Even though most scholars try to say, try to prove that the Philistines were Greeks or Cretans. No, the origin of the Philistines were Egyptians. And this map will give us a wider view of this area that is called the Middle East, with countries like Libya, Egypt, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Iran. Today, this area is considered lands of the Arab people. But 
2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, there was other ethnic groups living in this area. Besides Arabs, they were just one of many people, groups, or nations living in that region of the world. Zooming in on that map, you can see how the land of Palestine, Israel, fits right in the middle of everywhere. This is a major, vital place in the world when it concerning global trading and commerce because it sits in the middle of the junction between Europe, Africa, and Asia. It's a very important land. It's the land that connects everyone. This area or region was a major economic corridor for the ancient nations of the world. Any nation living in this area would naturally grow very wealthy from international trade. One of these trade routes were known in ancient time as the King's Highway. The King's Highway was a trade route of vital importance in the ancient Near East. Connecting Africa with Mesopotamia, it ran from Egypt across the Sinai Peninsula to Aquaba or the Gulf of Aquaba, then turned northward across Transjordan to Damascus and the Euphrates River. The route began or the highway began in Helipolis, Egypt. From there, the highway turned northward through Araba, past Petra. Petra is where Edom lived. Any nation that lived on this route would grow naturally wealthy from international trade. Another nation that was on this route was the land of Moab and Rabbah Amen. Rabbah Amen is where the ancient Ammonites lived, modern day Ammon and Jordan. This route connected all the way to Damascus. From Damascus, it went into the upper Euphrates. The route started in Egypt, but Egypt had its own trade routes. They were connected to Libya. They were connected to the Mediterranean, Crete, Nubia, uh, Yemen, or in those times, the Kingdom of Sheba. Now, when this route went up into the upper Euphrates, it connected to Babylonia, Syria, the Medes, the Persians, Iran. It went into Afghanistan, into India, also into China. And from this route that also connected with Cyprus and Crete and areas in Turkey, it went up into Greece, into Italy, to Spain, into parts of Europe, the Baltics, Germany, England. So this was a major area, major economic corridor. So the nations in this land fought each other for control of international trade. Numerous ancient states, including Edom, Moab, Ammon, and various Aramean polities depended largely on the king's highway for trade. 
And this map, this map connects the whole world with this particular economic corridor or this trade route. On this map, there are certain cities that are indicated, very important cities in the ancient times, such as Alexandria, Egypt. Memphis, Egypt, even the city of Gaza, Petra, the city located in the country of Edom, Damascus, the city, the major city of Syria. If you go up a little, Antioch, the city where the disciples were first called Christians. To the right, there were Europas, a little lower, Babylon. This King's Highway and these trade routes were the center of international trade. Whoever owned the land of Canaan controlled international trade. Now, if I enlarged the map a little more, you can see the overall name of this route, the Silk Road, from 300 BC or around the time of Alexander the Great to AD 100. And we can see on the left Damascus, Gaza, or the trade route of the King's Highway. But we can see looking further to the right how it connects Iran and from Iran Central Asia and India and from Central Asia it connects into the country or the region of China this is the complete map and the map contains a land route and other routes like routes by sea where you can travel to Arabia, India, Vietnam, South China Sea, from South China Sea you can travel to the South Pacific this map is part of a larger trade route or economic corridor. These routes also went into North Africa. These trade routes went into Europe, Russia, Greece, Italy, Spain, Germany, France, England, Norway. This economic corridor was the way in which the world communicated in ancient times. This is nothing new, these modern economic corridors or trade routes. These ancient nations fought for control of these trade routes ancient trade routes land routes and sea routes trade connected Mediterranean Sea with other parts of world such as South and East Asia trade routes connected Arabian Sea to Persian Gulf and Red Sea. Traders went to Egypt and Syria to cross Arabian Sea. Sailors used monsoon winds, which blew southwest during the hot months and northeast during the cold season. In the times of King David and King Solomon, Israel 
was the dominating power or nation in the land of Palestine, Israel. And they, King David and King Solomon, controlled the king's highway for international trade. Israel was not some isolated kingdom. They were the kingdom in the middle of the world that controlled world commerce and trade. King David and King Solomon was very, very wealthy kings. Economic corridor. Economic corridors are integrated networks of infrastructure within a geographical area designed to stimulate economic development. The King Highway was an economic corridor. They connect different economic agents in a particular geographic area. Corridors may be developed within a country or between countries. Corridors exist in Asia, Africa, and other areas. Economic corridors often feature integrated infrastructure such as highways, such as the King Highway, railroads, and ports, and may link cities or countries. Example, India, Middle East, Europe, Economic Corridor. India, Middle East, Europe, Economic Corridor. The India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor, IMEC, is a planned economic corridor that aims to bolster economic development by fostering connectivity and economic integration between Asia, the Persian Gulf, and Europe. The corridor is proposed from India to Europe through the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, and Greece. The project was launched to boister transportation and communication links between Europe and Asia through rail, railroads, and shipping networks. It is seen as a U.S. counter to China's Belt and Road Initiative, which is the new Silk Road. So this particular economic corridor is in competition against China Belt and Road Initiative or trade route. The Memorandum of Understanding document has only mapped out the potential geography of a corridor and will compete against the Suez Canal, which is another trade route. The project may get delayed due to 2023 Israel-Hamas war. And as we can clearly take note of, these trade routes are centered in the land of Palestine, Israel. The India Middle East Economic Corridor or trade route stand in opposition and competition with the trade route proposed by the Chinese. So these wars are fought over trade routes money, trading, and commerce, amongst other issues. The previous map was the Middle East India trade route. The Belt and Road Initiative and other related projects is the trade routes proposed by the Chinese.
This video is the first in a series of videos on the origin of the conflict between Palestine and the state of Israel and the conflict for control of world commerce and trade from the King's Highway and how all nations from ancient times fought in this land for control of this center, this area, this region to control global world commerce so stay tuned for the next episode